All right, guys, before I start this month's Rewind review, I'll let you know that I'm joined by two special guests. I'll leave all this shit below. You can find them, but because they're a different country, I had to Skype with them and something stuffed up early on in the video, so it's just audio for the first couple minutes, but then it becomes video and audio. I just thought I'd let you know before you guys start watching. Enjoy the video. All right, what is up, everyone? So I have a very special video for you guys today. I'm joined by two very, very cool guys, Alex and Pedro from the Brothers Binge podcast. What's up, guys? Hey, what's, what's up, man? How you doing? Glad to be on the show. Thanks, guys, for coming on. So, obviously, with a v Infinity War, within within days, uh, I thought this would be a cool time to to get some guys on and review where it all started with the uh, the first Avengers. Um, and this was a phenomenal film. Uh, you look at it in the cast, Evans... Hemsworth, throw it Danny Jr., Mark Ruffalo, Jeremy Renner, Scarlett Johansson, Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Jackson, stacked cast. It obviously follows a story of the coming together of the Avengers to get them to stop Loki and shit going down, pretty much, to stop the, the whole world going down. Um, this is obviously 2012, we're going back six years to the month, to April. Uh, first off, what do you guys think of the movie, just as a whole? As a whole, I, it's it's one of those movies that like you know you know you had that you were anticipating it from the from the very beginning. Once you realized that they were going to create an <laughs> Avengers movie, like you, it's one of those ones that like once you once it comes together, it's just it's just perfect. You know, I, I for me honestly, I love the movie. I sat at, I sat like a little I was watching that movie like I was a little kid, just sitting there, just like oh my god. It's definitely an instant classic. Yeah, I think that um, with those movies. You know that they're classics because they can stand the uh, the test of time. It's been, like you said, six years, and it's still a great movie. Great movie. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And you guys are obviously a bit older than me. I kind of... This was kind of my introduction to the whole MCU. I was a bit younger when the, the whole thing began. And I'm actually re-watching it now. And just the little, like, you know, bits that we kept throwing in to kind of tie it all together um, was just great to see it finally come together. And I think it, it, it was such a, a well-done collaboration have we seen from like you know batman and superman and justice league how hard it is to necessarily put all those characters together and make it work um and they did that phenomenally well uh, i think um where do you guys when it came to before the mcu uh, about when it started before the avengers which one was your favorite movie before the actual first avengers came out uh, for me, I was just like I would go with the the original thing. For me, it was like Iron Man. Iron Man, I it was one of those movies that you're just like, this is what they can do with <laughs> yeah. with like right with the technology now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of those ones that it's just it, it blew blew my mind. And then when I realized that they were gonna come up with the Avengers movie, like I I didn't know how they were gonna do it. Like I I, I honestly because at the time what Iron Man came out in 2008, yeah, yeah. 2008. Yeah. At that time, you're just like. I, I dumbfounded. You know what I'm saying? Like it was that has to be my favorite one before the Avengers uh, came out. I have to agree with you. I have to say that Iron Man was probably my, probably my, my favorite. I think that Captain America grew on me. I think the the first Captain America was okay. Same thing with Thor one, but Iron Man just knocked it out of the park. Definitely. Yeah, I, I as I said, I've been rewatching it like building up to this uh, Infinity War, and I hadn't seen. I don't. I hadn't remembered seeing many of the ones beforehand and i was just blown away that with iron man after rewatching it i was like okay this is like this is how it should start and obviously it grappled off a little bit with um thor and captain america and even iron man 2 a, a bit uh, like you know, yeah, yeah no shaky. i agree i agree yeah um, i agree <laughs> but no it ended up working perfectly and i think that a big factor was the tone and just the set of the whole the way they set up so light-hearted and fun uh was a great aspect in my opinion i think the way everything was you know so serious but they made it light-hearted but they weren't forcing things and obviously with a mcu movie now you feel like they may not necessarily force humor on you i feel like this is one of the only movies that doesn't force the humor down it comes naturally with the whole movie um, yeah i i agree i think that with all the the characters being so different from each other they they mix very well and it's just Built-in comedy at that point, mm -hmm. and it's not less not being forced at all. Yeah, it was very, it was very, it was very, very subtle humor, and I feel like all the the rest of the MCU really looks at the the first Iron Man and looks at all this stuff as like a a template for their movies. Oh yeah, and uh, 
like you said, I mean, they didn't, they didn't force it on you. They didn't do anything like that. So it was just, it was really nice to see because you, you didn't see a movie like that at that time, you know? Yeah. That was, yeah, that was definitely a thing that, especially after like, you know, the, the, uh, Christian, Christian, no. Yeah. Christian Bale's Batman trilogy. Uh, that was so dark and, you know, that was the kind of set for what superhero movies were at that time. And then I bring you this and, you know, I'll, I'll, I mean, a lot of people might necessarily grow up with it. Well, let me, let me ask you. Okay. Like, I know we're talking about the Avengers. Yeah. We're talking about the MCU. Yeah. I, let me, what do you think about Christian Bale's Batman? As Honestly, a, as, 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 as a Batman. trilogy. As a trilogy. No, 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 no. I am as a Batman. huge fan of uh, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. But after seeing Affleck's Batman, I'm done with Bale's Batman. In honesty, hey, you, that's fine. Y'all can y'all can <laughs> bond mean, on that. I mean, I'm saying, you know what? Uh, let, let's just let, you know. Let's just do this hard <laughs> show. Let, let, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't worry you got about the brother him. binge right here. Yeah, you're the new brother in the <laughs> brothers binge. You know what I'm saying? No, I I I agree. Affleck was. I mean, we're we're kind of veering off track, but I, uh, Affleck is great. However, Christian Bale's Batman. I, it was something special. I feel. I know you didn't like it because he had a he had a lisp and he kind of sounded weird. I don't know. I liked it, but that's fine. Y'all, y'all can have y'all's opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, I I feel like I loved it at the time, and then the more like comic books are read, and especially seeing Bat, uh, you know, Bat Flick, uh, I, you know, I I'm a bit different on him now, but I still love the movies. The yeah, movies yeah. are phenomenal. Yeah, no, the movies were yeah, good. Yeah. The, the, that's what I I always said that like the whole you know Christian Bale stuff like the, their Bat the Dark Knight trilogy. They were great movies, but I just didn't like Christian Bale's I th- Batman. I, th- I think that I think what should have happened if they would have flipped, if if Ben Affleck got the Dark Knight trilogy story, that would have been great. But I think that like it was like a bad Batman and a good story, and then yeah. a good Batman and a bad story. Yeah, so if they would have flipped, it would yeah, it would have worked out better. Um, bit bit off track there as we do, but uh, back <laughs> sorry, to sorry, the sorry. About that. Uh, one thing I really liked about the movie was they handled every single character really well, not just that they made every single character important, but the way they interacted with each other wasn't necessarily, oh, we're all going to here to save the world, let's all be friends. They kind of clashed a lot at the start, and I really liked that aspect, the clashing, and you saw every character's you know, reason of being there, and it all worked and came together, and that was a huge aspect to me liking the movie. Yeah, I remember whenever the, the movie first came out, a lot of people were like, well, how are they going to do, how are they going to have all these big characters in one movie, and like, not have one character take over. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody already thought that, you know, when you're going to have Iron Man in the movie, it's going to be mostly about Iron yeah. Man. But no, mm-hmm. they actually handled it really well to, well to where each character you knew had their own separate part, but it made it made the movie a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I think that they, said, they did so well with that, that with like Infinity War coming out, having like 40 big, big time characters is going to be in it. I think that if, if they didn't do so well with that first Avengers movie, if if we would have seen a movie saying oh there's gonna be forty superheroes we would have been like how the there's hell, no way how are they gonna exactly. do that but I mean they did it so well just with the first movie that we're like oh okay Marvel can definitely pull that off yeah exactly yeah that that is a, a a back of the mind concern coming up to Infinity War there is so much going on in this movie um, and they've they've given it I think two and a half hours which is pretty close to to what the first Avengers got and um, I wish it was more Infin- <laughs> uh, Civil War got so it'll be interesting to see. How that all works, I trust them. Though I'm not, I'm not. Um, you know, it's right at the back of the mind here. Concerned, um, but a huge part of the movie. I think every one of everyone's favorite parts of the movie, Loki, as the villain, phenomenal. I mean, I was I watched the first Thor and I was like, okay, this guy's this guy's cool. And then I watched the first Avengers, uh, the first Avengers movie, and I was like, okay, this guy's really cool. Then I got to Ragnarok, and I'm like, this guy's fucking awesome. Rewatch Avengers, maybe. It's yeah, yeah no, more. definitely. Uh, yeah, how do you guys think Loki felt in that movie? I, I I agree. I think that at first it was it was he definitely grew on me. I think that with the first Thor movie, I was like, oh okay, this is you know I, I get it. He's like the the god of trickery or whatever. But as he's grown so much, as much as the heroes have grown, he's grown just as much. And I think that's kind of rare when it comes to villains and uh, big time movies like that. Yeah, because I mean, what other villain in the MCU has? Has that story arc has that that story arc, but that a uh, character depth to them yep. that much. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have a villain on these MCUs, it's either like okay, they're the bad guy, they fight, they get defeated. But Loki, he was one of the ones who who 
lasted the, what is it a test of time or whatever yeah. to where like he 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 has a depth character depth to him to where people grow to love him as a as a whole and even when he's a bad guy you're still kind of rooting for him <laughs> exactly yeah no, i I definitely agree. I mean, the biggest part of MC movies that I dislike is the villain. Usually they're very, you know, forgettable in a sense. And I liked that they gave us a, a character that we can remember and they bring him back and made him important to the story. Not He's not just a random guy. He's obviously Thor's brother, um, adopted brother. Uh, but, you know, it, he is family to him and I'm actually, I think it makes it even more important. Saying that, I did, was, was so worried. I remember going to the first Avengers and I'd seen the, it was either the mask or the son of the mask with Loki in it. And I was like, okay, how is this guy the villain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was so paranoid. I was walking in. I was like, this guy is going to be our villain. And I was so worried. <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah, I honestly. forgot about I that. <laughs> That's good. And I That's hadn't good seen catch. Thor anything at that point. So, yeah, I was just paranoid as hell. I walked out like, okay, that guy's a cool guy. I'm, I'm fine with this now. And, it, and so, it so you're out. saying that it out. you're saying that you went into the first Avengers without watching anything prior, Yeah, I, right? I think... I feel like I might have seen bits of a lot of stuff. I was, I would have been, I would have been ten when the first, uh, when the first Iron Man came out. So I would have been, uh, fourteen going into the first Avengers. So it was kind of, um, I wasn't, I didn't have all this behind me. I can tell you that much. I wasn't the biggest movie fan, uh, before going into that. And even then, I don't think I saw Thor: Dark World when that came out either. I saw Iron Man three. I missed Dark World, and then uh, I think the next one was Winter Soldier, and then from Winter Soldier on, I you know saw them all. Um, have you? Did you guys see them all? In, all eighteen in the in the theater? In the, in the theater? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sure did. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure I mean, did. Yeah. We from yeah. the from the very start when I would have when Iron Man first came out, it was one of those ones where we were like we saw it, and then right when we saw the end credits, we're like, oh yeah, this is something we're gonna do. Yeah, we're invested now. We're invested now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I would even. Think of that. I actually watched like the end credit scene while I've been watching all the movies, and they've been teasing shit for so long, like a long time. I'm, I mean, I'm happy that I've only waited pretty much six years to see this all kind of come together. You guys have waited what, ten? Ten years plus <laughs> yeah. any time before. Yeah, I mean, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. exactly ten years, and then like we, everybody's been waiting for Thanos to to finally come and meet the Avengers, and now it's like actually happening. Like it's just. Super exciting. It's one of those ones that you just... I'm definitely going to the movies to watch this one again. Yeah. And and I think that I'm so excited for this one. It's, it's kind of like, how are they going to top this? Yeah, and that's dude, what I, like, I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah. Every uh, time I see those trailers. They teased Thanos at the end, in the end credits of Avengers. And I didn't realize that until re-watching it. I was like, shit, this has been a long time in the making. Like, that is a very long time to wait for this character. So hopefully it pays off. Um, but... When it comes to the whole MCU, where do you guys kind of rate this first Avengers? You know, it doesn't have to give you the exact top, but like top three, top five, top ten, you know, do whatever you... I would say top top three, for sure. Yeah, because it's one of the, like you said, like it, you, event, the first Avengers was the first milestone that you 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 were waiting for this, when this whole cinematic universe. So I feel like that is in my top three as well, because, you know, we've been waiting for it for so long, then you finally get the Avengers... And then it goes from there. Yeah. I, I think top three would be. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I, I think top three for me would be Avengers, Civil War, Ragnarok. I think that's that's my top. Uh, I don't know. Guardians of the Galaxy was pretty oh, good. Oh, sure. I forgot about Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. That would be somewhere in my top five. Yeah. Uh, I've, I'm actually doing working on like a list, ranking list for the, for the channel. Um, and I had Avengers, I think, fourth or fifth. Uh, before re-watching them all. Now I've re-watched them all. It's definitely top three. It is just the whole combination of everyone coming together and the way they, you know, set them up to hate each other or dislike each other then come together, fight a good villain, uh, fight a, you know, just have a great movie in general with the good themes. And, you know, actually had a sad-ish bit at the end with obviously Iron Man flying up to save it and you're like, shit, what, what's going to happen? Is this... Obviously, I would assume they would have announced Iron Man 3 at that point because that came out a few months after. But, you know, you, you are paranoid in the back of your head. But I think the whole movie in general was just such a, a, a great coming together of everything we'd seen. And then even everything after, I think that movie is definitely, as you said, the one to top when it comes to the whole MCU. The whole MCU. And especially when you have a moment like, and it, it, I, I will never forget this moment in Avengers is when uh, David Banner 
was right there and he turns around he was like I'm always angry and then slowly oh, yeah, turns yeah. into the Hulk people said oh my god we saw that, that scene right there like makes my hair stand <laughs> up like it, I love that scene we saw it in the theaters and everybody started cheering remember? oh they were <laughs> cheering oh that was so yeah, good that's cool. another scene I love in that movie is when um it's another Hulk scene when he grabs grabs Loki and he does the oh <laughs> and the swing around that is ridiculous <laughs> oh yeah cool. like that that yeah. was good I you know where else are you going to say that shit? That's phenomenal. And I think that's a big win for for w- what made the Avengers was that when we had previously seen the Hulk, he was always obviously very angry. Um, you know, he didn't know what he was or whatever with the Avengers. It was the first time that you really saw him be funny. Where, like when he would punch like Thor or whatever, or when he like called him a puny god. Like there was like little things like that. I think that he really stole the show. Oh, yeah. In in a good way, and you know that's a good scene. Whenever they do a callback movies later yeah. with Ragnarok, whenever uh, he did it to Thor, and he was like, "Yes, now you know how it feels." <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like you know that's a good scene when they do callbacks. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, bring back to the Hulk is actually a good thing. Do you guys think he was Mark Ruffalo was a better Hulk or worse Hulk than Edward Norton? Oh, better, better, one thousand percent better. One hundred percent think he's a better Hulk. I mean, the Edward Norton movie was it was a good movie. I I mean, I enjoyed it. But just like if you were to compare the two, like I just I just feel like this Hulk has, and again I, I say the same word, a, a character depth to him more than yeah. the uh, Edward Norton Hulk. I, I think Edward Norton was was very it was more of a grounded like dramatic version of Bruce Banner, but Mark Ruffalo is like the nerdy like kind of awkward yeah like what the the Bruce Banner that we saw like in the cartoons and the comic books and everything. So I I, I like Mark Ruffalo better. Definitely. I mean, you guys would have been around when they like recast. The Hulk. I obviously rewatched The Incredible Hulk. Not a fan, um, and I wasn't really a fan of Edward Norton. But I heard a lot of people were, you know, a bit pat- like you worried, saying, "Why would you recast Edward Norton? Were you in that percentage of people?" Yeah. Whenever I heard that they weren't gonna, that Edward Norton wasn't going to do it, I, I I was a bit worried because up to that point he was one of the best, you know, Hulks to do it. You know, because the. Who was the the other guy? David uh, Banna? Eric Banna. Or, uh, Eric Banner. Eric Banner or whatever. Australia. Like his Hulk, I, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Australian. I wasn't a big fan of his Hulk. So whenever I saw Edward Norton's Hulk, obviously I'm like, how are you going to replace this guy? Yeah. But they proved me wrong, and they actually did it. I'm glad that they replaced him. I don't know if you guys know, but the reason why they oh, replaced no, definitely Edward Norton was because he was he was mad that he wasn't going to get paid the most money on the Avengers set. Um, apparently, obviously Robert Downey Jr. was the the number one earner and i think that he was like third or fourth on the list and he said if he doesn't get paid the most that he's gonna leave so they're like well see ya so yeah it's, 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 it's his, his fault. fault it's yeah. his fault yeah did you guys uh i mean i don't think he's in the avengers but obviously uh don Cheadle as Rhodey. um did you guys hear all the backstory about that and why he got recast no oh yeah with terrence howard was the first one yeah, yeah terrence howard was the first one i don't i don't no, know what yeah. happened with that um well i mean it basically uh, they gave all the money to Robert Downey Jr. that they were going to give to Terrence Howard. And Terrence Howard actually was the one that kind of forced the directors and John Favreau to, to hire Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. And then they they said, okay, we're going to give you $8 million for the second movie. And they gave him one. And and they're like, no, we've got, we got other places to spend the money, uh, RDJ. And uh, so Terrence Howard rings... And rings and rings and rings. Um, Robert Downey Jr. is like, I, ne- I need you to return the favor, man. Never spoke to him again. Robert Downey Jr. just Dang. wow, him that's him. dirty. Uh, sorry. I mean, sorry. I, I I see where Terrence is coming from, but he's got to be kicking himself now. Oh, one hundred percent. He's got to I mean, be kicking himself. I get it. It's a pay cut, but you're part of the Avengers, bro. I don't. I don't. I don't think that he knew what it was going to turn into. Yeah. Though. Well, yeah. There's no way. He brings it back and he says that Robert Downey Jr. owes him $100 million because that's the money he's earned from uh, from the Iron Man role because he got him that. So definitely a bit of animosity between those two actors. Oh, wow. Uh, that's yeah, nuts. That's, I, I never heard that. That's crazy. That. I didn't know that yeah, at all. No, I, I mean, with because I, I totally forgot about Terrence Howard until I rewatched the first Iron Man. I was like, oh, shit, like different Rhodey. Um, and then, you know, had to do all the back searching and shit and finding out why he was recast. But no, nah, some of the... You never know what's happening behind the sets with shit like that, and you can just, you know, palm it off and say it was, you know, bad attitude as half of our set, but it all comes out to money in the end. Alright, um, so pretty much for me, this movie was 
did everything right. It you know it wasn't the flawless cinematic masterpiece, but as an Avengers movie, as a Marvel movie, this movie did everything right it needed to do. It ticked every single box. It had great characters, great character depth, a great villain, humor that wasn't forced down your throat, and just a great theme in general. Um, I'm giving this movie an A. It was phenomenal, every sense of the words. You guys finishing notes. Definitely, it's one of those movies that I think is gonna. It's going to be there around forever and everybody's going to go back to it. I mean, it's like I said, it started everything. It started, I think the cinema, they're going to go into what? The next phase. And this is still going to be, people are going to think about this. Like yeah. if I were to give it a grade, I'll give it an A as well. Definitely. I, I would 100% give it an A. I think that you've said it the best. I mean, it's going to stand the test of time. People are going to still be watching this movie 10, 20, 30 years down the line. And they're going to be like, this is where it all started. Yep. Because it's, it's all spun from this. So yeah, exactly right. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please check out The Brothers Binge, uh, their podcast, iTunes and SoundCloud, I believe. Uh, I'm hoping that's correct. Yeah. Uh, they also just got merch uh, put out, so get their merch, guys. I'm actually going to go and order it in a minute. You guys better do it. I'm going to drop all their links below, so check them out. Phenomenal. You get to listen to them now, so when they get huge, you can say you were there for the start. <laughs> so just think about that in the back of your mind. Thank you guys We appreciate for that, man. Thank you. Uh, comment below what you thought of the movie, what you thought of the review, what you guys, if you guys liked Brothers Binge. I'm hoping you did. I'm hoping there's no negative comments. That'd be awkward. Um, <laughs> give it a thumbs up and subscribe.